welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at practicing writing equations for nuclear decay. Here we have the different particles that we need to be familiar with for nuclear decay. The first is the alpha particle, which can be represented with the alpha symbol or as the nucleus of a helium, which has a mass of four and an atomic number of two. We then have the beta particle, which has the beta symbol or it can be represented as an electron, which has a mass of zero and an atomic number of minus one. The gamma wave has no mass or charge, so we don't tend to have equations which involve these. You can also have equations which involve protons, which have a mass of one and an atomic number of one, or neutrons with a mass of one and an atomic number of zero. Let's have a look at an example first. To do these examples, what we're looking for is for the mass number on the left hand side to equal the total mass on the right hand side and for the atomic numbers on the left hand side to equal the total atomic numbers on the right hand side. In this case we're trying to find the missing particle here. The mass number on the left hand side is 238 and this needs to equal 4 plus whatever the mass of the missing particle is. Therefore the missing particle must have a mass of 234. For the atomic number, we have atomic number 92 on the left hand side, which must equal the atomic number of 2 for the alpha particle, plus whatever the atomic number of the unknown particle is, which must be 90. If we then use the data book to find atomic number 90, we can find the symbol for this particle, which is thorium, th. In the second example, we have a beta emission. The mass number on the left hand side is 14, which needs to equal the mass number of the beta particle plus the unknown particle. The unknown particle must have a mass of 14. The atomic number on the left hand side is 6, which must equal the atomic number of the beta particle plus the unknown particle. Because we have a negative number here, the unknown particle must have an atomic number of 7, as we'll have negative 1 plus 7 to equal 6. If we then look up atomic number 7 in the data book, we can find the symbol is N for nitrogen. Here we have a neutron capture. So for the mass numbers on the left hand side have to equal the mass number on the right hand side. So we have 238 plus 1. So the mass number will be 239 and the atomic number on the left hand side needs to add up to be the same as that on the right hand side. So we have 92 plus 0, so the atomic number must also be 92, meaning that this is still uranium. Here we have a proton which has been released. We follow exactly the same steps. We have our mass number on the left which is 11, our mass number on the right for the proton is 1, plus the unknown particle, which must have a mass of 10. We've then got the atomic number on the left, which is 7, plus the atomic number on the right for the proton, which is 1, plus the unknown particle. This means the unknown particle must have an atomic number of 6. If we look this up in the data book, then we can find that this is carbon. Pause the video now and try to find the unknown particles in each of these equations.
to your note and try to write out these equations. We're writing the equation for the alpha decay of polonium 210. 210 is the mass of the polonium. Using the data book, you can find the atomic number of polonium, which is 84. For alpha decay, we are losing an alpha particle, which has a mass of 4 and an atomic number of 2. We then need the masses on either side of the arrow to add up. So here we have 210 equals 4 plus an unknown mass, which will be 206. And then for the atomic numbers, we have 84 equals 2 plus an unknown atomic number, which will be 82. We can then use the data book to find atomic number 82, which is lead. For this equation, we're writing the alpha decay of uranium 234. 234 is the mass of uranium, and you can find the atomic number 92 using the data book. Alpha decay means that we are losing an alpha particle, which has a mass of 4 and an atomic number of 2. The mass numbers on either side of the arrow need to add up, so we have 234 equals 4 plus an unknown mass, which will be 230. We then have atomic number 92, which equals 2 plus the unknown atomic number, which will be 90. Looking this up in the data book, we can find that that is thorium, symbol TH. Here we have the beta decay of bismuth 214. 214 is the mass number of bismuth. You can look up bismuth on the periodic table to find the atomic number is 83. And we're losing a beta particle. This has no mass and has an atomic number of negative 1 and the symbol for an electron. The mass numbers on either side need to add up. So here we have 214 equals 0 plus our unknown mass, which will also be 214. The atomic numbers have to add as well, so we have 83 equals negative 1 plus an unknown atomic number, which will be 84 to balance that negative value. If we then look up 84 in the periodic table, we can see that that is polonium with symbol PO. For beta decay of lead, we have lead 210, and lead has an atomic number of 82. We're then losing a beta particle. The mass numbers need to add up, so we have 210 equals 0 plus the unknown mass, which is 210. We then do the same with the atomic numbers. We can look up atomic number 83 on the periodic table and find that it is bismuth, Bi. Here we have neutron capture of gadolinium 157. So this has a mass number of 157 and a symbol GA. If we look up GA on the periodic table, you'll find it has an atomic number of 64. We're capturing a neutron, which has a mass number of 1 and an atomic number of 0, symbol N. The mass numbers need to add up, so we have 157 plus 1, which gives a mass number of 158. The atomic numbers also need to add up, so we have 64 plus 0 to give 64. This means that we just have a different isotope of gadolinium. Here we have nitrogen 14 being bombarded with an alpha particle. So nitrogen here has a mass of 14 and an atomic number of 7. We're bombarding it with an alpha particle, which means that that is one of the reactants here. And then we need to find the product. The mass numbers need to add up, so we take 14 plus 4 to give a mass number of 18. And then the same with the atomic numbers, we have 7 plus 2 to give an atomic number of 9. If we look up atomic number 9, we find that that is fluorine. Here we have aluminium 27, which has an atomic number of 13 being bombarded with an alpha particle and we're told that it produces phosphorus 30. Phosphorus has an atomic number of 15. We need to check that the mass numbers and the atomic numbers add up. So here we have 27 plus 4 equals 30 plus a missing particle. So we have a total mass on the left hand side of 31 and a total mass on the right hand side of currently 30, so we're missing 1. And then the same with the atomic numbers, we have 13 plus 2, which is 15, 
and then 15 on the right hand side plus a missing atomic number which must be zero which means we must also be producing a neutron. In our final example we have boron 11 which has an atomic number of 5 decaying by proton emission. So here this is emitting a proton which has a mass number of 1 and an atomic number of 1 and we need to have all of the mass numbers and atomic numbers add up. So we have a mass number of 11 on the left hand side and 1 plus a missing particle on the right hand side. So that missing particle must have a mass of 10. And then atomic number 5 on the left hand side and atomic number 1 plus a missing particle which must have a mass of 4. If we look up atomic number 4 in the periodic table we can see that that is beryllium with the symbol BE. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now!